Hi, all. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Good morning, Claudine. How are us? How is everybody? Good. Let's see, it's getting set up. There was a, there might be some pretty cool things along the way. We might get, diverted a little from what I was originally thinking because we might be picking up some cool things including what looks to be like it we could maybe have a pretty good sense that it's been raining all day here and then thankfully now it just cleared off so we'll get everybody in here and then get going pretty quick I'm standing here in front of the apartment I think that's everybody in here for the moment. But I'm hoping we get a sunset and there might be something happening in front of a certain church along the way, which I'm kind of excited about if it is what I think it is. So we'll get started because I wanna cruise down there and try to see if we could see it. So we are over here. This is number 74, Rue de Cadenet de Moi. And this is where on this very day, 100 years ago today, the Ernest and Hadley Hemingway moved into this apartment. Up there, it was a fourth floor walk up and even more, uh, even more uh, rugged than that. <laughs> But they lived up there. They had to walk up there to the fourth floor, as, as many of you that have come to Paris or live in Paris know. And so it was just the one above that, on um, above the orange shade. So it's the fifth American floor, fourth floor. And they found this one. They had came into Paris on December 20th, 1921. They stayed down on Rue Jacob. And then their friend through Sherwood Anderson helped them find a place to live. And so everybody had wanted them to go and stay over in Montparnasse because the people they had started to meet all lived around Montparnasse in the upper part uh, or lower part, I should say, of Saint-Germain. And uh, they decided they didn't want to live quite that close to everybody. So they decided to come over here to the Latin Quarter because we are in the Latin Quarter right here. And it was a little bit farther away from everybody. We are surrounded by, look at this great old street. This used, there was a tennis court here at the time on this street, Rue Roland. And then we are, of course, right around the corner from the Place de Contrescarpe. But they moved into this apartment. He sent letters back to his family saying how wonderful it was. And it was so great. And, you know, it cost them like next to nothing to stay here. And uh, they, but it, in reality, it had slanted floors and it didn't have any, running water, of course, and had the Turkish toilet in the hall in the hallway of the building. And but it did come with their own little femme de menage. And she would come at each day twice a day to get them food and to bring them water, take out the other water. But there is even a plaque here. It says, I think it had, yeah, it says January. It doesn't have the night though. But it has a little thing here and it says, you know, this is when they were very poor and very happy. And then this business is gone, but they have this sign that said under Hemingway's, which is kind of fun. But right next door, this was the Bal de Musette. And this was in the summer, they'd have their window open, they'd hear it all night long, whether they liked it or not. And then in the winter, it was kind of a nice place to go and duck into. But they are selling this little, uh, DVD of the four marriages. I need to stop in here and see if you could get it, like stream it at least. But you know, they're capitalizing on it for those that are gonna come over here and see where he lived. And it was, uh, 
this was, you know, now this area, you know, it's more expensive to live, of course, but back then it was not. And over here we have, it's right around the corner for the Place de Contrescarpe, which is going to be kind of a bustling right now. Look at that, still have all the Christmas stuff up again, still. Some of it in places, I was sitting out front a lottery the other day, and we, my friend and I thought somebody was stealing the decorations because of the way they were trying to take them down, but they just took them down. But this Place de Contrescarpe, and everybody nowadays, likes to come here and I see them post pictures and videos saying they're getting their tuning into their inner Hemingway. But this area was kind of gross. It was really stinky. It was basically filled with bums. They would sit out here in the middle and wait for the restaurants to ring a bell. And that would tell them that they could go in there and get some of the food that's left over. And so they actually didn't like coming here. Hadley really didn't like walking through here, but Ernest didn't either. And so this is the spot. This is now Cafe Del Ma. And this is where they used to sit. He would sometimes sit and write until he got a place around the corner. But this place was closed for a long time and they reopened and I don't, they're not the same as they used to be because I did go there one time didn't think it was all that great but it is you get a lot of students up here a lot of the young people in the neighborhood but then you also get a lot of the tourists come here but it's a really great place to come sit especially on one of those sunny spring days and over there you have Rue Mouffetard and I'd start singing the Patrick Ruel song but then YouTube will get mad at me <laughs> and maybe you guys wouldn't want to hear that either but we are gonna head down here, the street here is all closed off on Sunday so that people could walk. So it's a big, Rue Mouffetard's a big market street down there too. There's lots and lots of stores and markets. It has, it was raining really, really hard this morning and uh, off and on all day, but now it's not supposed to rain as they said till next Sunday. So that's fantastic. Lots of healthy joggers out tonight. But it was last week, I think that was last week. It was in the 60s and warm, and it's gotten considerably colder. And then, of course, with wind, sometimes it's downright chilly. So here on Rue Descar, which is obviously you can see right around the corner, there's a little spot up here that he rented a tiny, tiny, tiny place, the very top of this building way up there we can't even see the very top of it because it sits back there he rented a tiny tiny room had a view of the back of the pantheon and it basically had like a little wood burning stove and he would take up his little bundle of twigs and right up there oh look you get some wine that's her going to april spritz that sounds like a horrific combination <laughs> escargot um but there is this little plaque here but this is also where paul verlaine died and paul verlaine died yesterday january 8th in 1896 but this plaque is not correct because he didn't live here and those years aren't correct he was only here really from 1922 till late 1923 but they have all these little pictures here the story of verlaine and Arthur Rimbaud is a good one. So make sure if you didn't see my post, I wrote about that yesterday on my Instagram, Claudine Blue Blonde Rouge, or my Facebook, Blue Blonde Rouge. Go check it out. It's quite a scandalous little dramatic story. But he would sit up there. He said that he would bring, fill his pockets with oranges, little mandarin oranges, and he'd have to bring them in 
take them down with him at night if he didn't eat them all because they would freeze because it was so cold. So we are behind the wonderful Saint Etienne Dumont. And that tower right there is the former tower of the Abbey Morifogo of Saint Jean Vieve. And if you guys, I hope you guys have listened to last week's episode of Paris History of Abbey Hemingway on the V Creative Podcast. So we did part one of the life of Saint Jean Vieve. And tomorrow is part two because there were so many amazing things about her. I couldn't fit it into one. So we have two episodes. And of course, the Saint Etienne du Mont is kind of her shrine to her now. But the Abbey of Saint Jean Vieve was built in about 512 by Clovis, King of the Franks. For Saint Jean Vieve, she died in 512. And basically right where we're walking right now was where the Abbey was. It butted up right next to St. Etienne du Mont. And there was even a little pass door kind of at the end of where that wall is, that shorter window. That's where actually they would go. They could go in from each side. And these two windows here, those ones right there, those, that is where the chapel of St. Jean Vieve, oh, three windows, sorry. These three right here is the chapel of Saint-Jean Vieux. And those stained glass windows are amazing. And they even include an image of Saint Etienne Dumont and the former abbey of Saint-Jean Vieux. And of course, the Pantheon was built for her. And that didn't really pan out because by the time Louis the 15th vowed to build it, if he was saved from death, he, it took 10 years to even get it started. And then by the time it was finally done, she resided in there for not very long and was kicked out because the revolution said, we need a place to build, bury these great men, Mary Bo. And now Mary Bo's not even there anymore. It's kicked him out. So here's St. Etienne. Oh. Okay, so I was here, when I walked by earlier, there was a whole bunch of people here and I was really hoping, let's see what we can see in the door. I was really hoping they were actually going to do the procession down. Should we pop in just in case? If they're doing something, I don't wanna bother them, but, um, Oh, I don't think they are. It looks pretty quiet. Yes, it's very quiet. Let's see. Okay, we'll go out because it's very quiet. And, uh, but, so her feast day, January 3rd, because that's when she died, January 3rd, 512, and from the 3rd to the 11th, they have been holding special masses and different events inside here for her. And yesterday I was in there for a couple hours doing a whole bunch of research and that I'll share in the next day or two with the podcast. And I was hoping that they were going to still do they used to actually take her reliquary out here, out into the front and bless it and then walk it down to Notre Dame. I don't think they have been doing that the last few years. So here's the Pantheon. So Hemingway would sit in his office writing about Michigan. And look at the top of that. That'd be not too bad, right? Let's see, get a couple more people in here real quick. And the outside, you see where it has on the outside the um, different color stones. 
that is because those were, were once windows when it was the church and it's a Greek cross design. And so it is, uh, it's pretty cool. It'd be pretty amazing to see what those windows were. But I was hoping, because when I was walking up here, it, there was patches, just quite a bit of blue sky. And you can see the tiniest shiver, sliver of the moon behind the Pantheon. And I was hoping we were going to get a good sunset, which is happening basically right now. So I don't think we're going to get it. But you can see down the street, you see our lady down there, Notre Dame. Her tower's up there. So Hemingway, they would walk down here all the time. Walk down over here. He would say he'd walk down Rue Soufflo and uh, walk down to the Jardin de Luxembourg. Oh, I want to take you guys over here really quickly. I don't get worn over by a taxi. I don't know if you guys have seen some of my stories, my Instagram stories I posted, but here at the Pantheon, as we all know, Josephine Baker was symbolically interred here at the end of November. And they have this really cool photo essay on the outside. And I'm gonna share all of these on my website and I'll type up what they say and give you a little history of each photo. But we'll walk by Sinazan as we head down. They're really well done. There's actually a few photos I haven't seen before. And you can go in there and see her in the crypt. Look at that tiara. Amazing. They took down uh, last week, if you were watching, we saw a bunch of the few of the buildings in blue. The Pantheon is also in blue. And they just took those lights down the other day. So when I was in here yesterday, I spent a few hours in here making some videos and doing some research and they started taking the lights out and by the time I left, they were gone. So here's more here. Here she is with her cheetah. So she would like walk and even did she was sleep in her bed with her. I knew I liked her, but it's really, really great. So I will share all of these in more detail than just the drive by, but it is here until the 13th of February. So if you happen to be coming, I know that's not usually peak travel season for most, but if you're gonna be here, check it out. If not, I got you covered. And they still have, look at all these great Christmas trees here. And that's the mayor's office of the fifth. Oh, there's the moon in the front. So they did a, ceremony here I think it was Friday President Macron and the president of the EU came here and they laid flowers at uh, the tomb of Simone Weil the amazing amazing Simone Weil and Nanette and when I went in there yesterday they were still there. So if before it's too late, go check out my Instagram stories. I'll try to, uh, I'll go in and save them too on my profile. But I just shared a tiny slice of the stuff I did in there. 
I went in there too. Make a detailed map of where everybody is because surprisingly, you can't find that. And if you do find it, it's from like 30 years ago. So it's not even updated with all the people. These are things I need. So this is Brusuflo. And usually, you know what? I should be walking on the other side of the street for you guys. So you could tell that I don't really take the pedestrian a little too seriously, but I'm safe. But if you look straight down there, there she is. There's the other lady. And you have these really great little Christmas lights going across here. There was one on the side street, and I think there's one down here that says Chihuahua Noel. And here, this is all part of Sorbon. This is where it comes up. And then you see way, way down there, the Tour Saint Jacques. So this is the old Roman road. When they say that old saying, all roads lead to Rome at one point, they did. And this was one of them. So I wanted to go to the park and there's a few things in there that I'd love to take people to. But sadly, they close it at 4.30 this time of the year. It always closes about half an hour or so before the sun sets. So, you know, mischief. So this is Rue Soufflot. Soufflot is the name of the architect of the Pantheon. He died before it was completed, but one of his students took it over. And so he got to have this street named after him. There's a special plaque inside as well. This time of the night's good for window peeping. But here in Paris, every year to wear your mask outside. And things are much quieter this week as opposed to last week. Last week was so busy, so many people. But this week, it's quite lovely and calm. There have been, the other day I was in the Orsay and there was a lot fewer people. Oh, joyous. So, that's what I saw. There was a huge lineup of police up behind the Pantheon. Look at that view of the Pantheon. When I was walking over, and they had all the people up front set and TN, so I thought maybe they were doing a procession. And that's why I got pretty excited. But I'll let you just hold on that pretty picture of the Pantheon. Well, I hopefully get to walk sometime. Oh, now we can go. And then you can see down here. Never a bad time for some gelato. I love, I might need that, even though I'm not a sweatshirt person. I might need that one. <laughs> I think it's a men's sweatshirt. This is a men's store. So thank you all for joining today in the morning or late morning, wherever you are.
here in lovely Paris. The sun is getting going up a little. I think there was over an inch of rain today too. So hopefully, but that's just what happens this time of the year. Hopefully it doesn't get too out of control. The, all of the pharmacies here in Paris have very, very long lines these days, people needing to get tests. COVID tests. So, and they're selling at home tests in grocery stores now. That was a big thing for a month by them till the end of January, unless they lengthen that. So, those bears are still here. I have a little beef with the bears. They've been here now since oh, almost two years now. And how many people have touched them? And how mangy are they? <laughs> I just think maybe in our sanitary ways, these are some of the best doors for on this street, Rue de Medici, I'll show you. I just think those bears are probably Maybe need a good bath. Oh, let's go over here. Because the fountain is all lit up. I can't believe that it is exactly a hundred years ago that Ernest and Hadley came here. I'm going to get killed. <laughs> Ernest and Hadley first came. To Paris. He had been here before briefly on his way to Italy, but that was only for a day or so. So the park's all closed, but you can see that amazing garland of the Fontaine de Medicis in the park. Let me go back here. Since they've cleaned this up, we got the back of the fountain working. And the back is one of my favorites because I love Lita and I love the story of Lita and the Swan. I think it's fascinating, but oh, I think it's on. I don't know. It's off. The water's off. Maybe for the winter, but look at how great that is all lit up. And so I don't know if we could, oh, I can zoom in there. So that's Lita and the swan. And so Zeus saw her and wanted to seduce her, but he could never be seen in his god-like ways. So he had to always transform himself. So that's why there's a lot of stories of him turning himself into a bull and a lot of other things. So he turned himself into a swan, seduced her. And the water spout, is the beak of the swan, copper beak of there. So he seduced her and she ended up also that same day, that same day she had sex with her husband. And so she uh, became pregnant with her husband's child or I shall say children. And then she became pregnant with Zeus's children. And a short time later, I'm not really sure of the gestational period, <laughs> she gave birth to two eggs. And one egg had the two sons of Zeus and the other egg had the two sons of her husband. It's a fact, but look at that, isn't that great? And then with that blue of the sky, oh, so gorgeous. Perfect timing, in and out of the, so, you know, it's mythology. You could take it for what it is. Here through the Medici, there is, so 
so there's the red wheelbarrow bookshop over here. She opened a second location over there. I'm pretty sure that's the same second location that she was in, or maybe it's the one in the middle, because that was also a bookstore that she was on in a big uh, spat with, and it was in all of the, it was on like BBC and a bunch of British uh, well, it's news sites because she and the other owner were gotten a little tizzy. So I'm not sure which one. Look at that apartment. Can you guys see in there? Oh, how that's a dream. If my friend Debbie and Ron are watching, this is where they stay on this street. I'm here. We're number five. Number five. Oh, that's this one. Everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> there you go right above trez yes that's it there we are it's a good time to do this because it's just dusk now <laughs> you just see all the good lights here i'm just very glad it's not raining Oh, Batistas. Suisse has fantastic salads. I guess their other food's good. I've always, only ever had the salads. They have a bunch of salads there that are delicious. They just turned the lights on here. Of course, the back of the Teatro Lorient. And the palace, Palais de Luxembourg. Built by Marie de Medici. Oh, she didn't get to stay there very long. But Hemingway would like to come through here. And he always, in movable piece, he told the story of how when he, they were hung, he was hungry, he would walk through here with Jack's pram and Jack and catch pigeons, break their necks, and throw them into. The back, but there's been a lot of things, other things written that but he probably didn't really do that. But you know, it helped add to his mystique. But he would always walk, they loved to walk through there and they would go there to avoid the bakeries when they were hungry too. Um, but he always stayed around here because I'll take you by the third place that he lived, the second place he lived. So they left to go to Toronto towards the end of Hadley's pregnancy. And she, they stayed there and they hated it. He actually hated it. And he was working, he had been working for the Toronto Star and he didn't like that. And so he quit and they moved back and they moved back to the Rue Notre Dame de Chance on the other side of the park. This is, we're on the northern side of the park. They call this the upper Luxembourg. The lower Luxembourg is where it gets really skinny and kind of ends towards Montparnasse. And so you, uh, they live there. And so you can reach it very easily if you walk all the way to the end of the southern edge of the park. This is Rue de Tournon. And that cafe there, it looks like they're redoing it. When I was here in the fall, it was closed. And I was kind of sad about that because that was a, that is where a lot of the Black American expats hung out. And that's where James Baldwin stayed. But it looks like the other day when I walked by, it looks like somebody's redoing it. So hopefully they're just dusting it up. Not very moldy. And of course, the beautiful Christmas trees back here. I surprised more people don't steal those Christmas ornaments. Oh, here we oh, I thought this was a security guard. It's just a, quite a few doggers out tonight. 
If I don't get run over by a car, I get run over by a jogger. But this is, I talk about it all the time, my favorite weekend of the year, the third weekend in September, when you get to go into a lot of the buildings, especially government buildings that are closed. They are open that weekend. Palais de Luxembourg is one of them. And it's astounding inside. It's absolutely fantastic. I've done it a few times, which I'm glad I've done because they've shared different parts of it. But it's really great. You've got the library, the bibliotech. It was painted by my guy, Delacroix. Let's go over here, it's a little quieter. Got some more people in here. And over here, so this is the Palais is now the Senate. And so these are a lot of buildings that are attached to the Senate. But here, there's a few of these around the city. This is one of the meter. So that right there from brass mark to brass mark is a meter. There's one of these also in the Place Vendôme. It's a little, a little pretty plaque here, 1796. So they put this in during the revolution. They probably wanted to say, we're going with our meter, not that royal meter. <laughs> The light looks even bluer on my phone than it does here in real life. It's a little gray, but we'll keep looking through this little, this little window. And this, of course. So there is the Petit Luxembourg, which is this building right here. So you really can't tell from the outside. It is a separate building. And this is where the president of the Senate lives. And in this little part right here, with that little half moon topped window is, is a chapel. And it is astounding. It is so amazing. It was the chapel of Marie de Medici. Put that back there. I wish you could go see that back there. It is really, really cool. It has these really great statues of different saints and it's all painted. It's very tiny. It was her little personal chapel. But it's really cool. And so, and then of course, right here we have, this is always such a cute little place. I think it's kind of spendy to say, but what a great location. So over here, we have the Musée de Luxembourg. And the Musée de Luxembourg is one of the oldest museums in the city. And at one point, it was just the uh, Museum of Living Artists. So it's very small. It was very small then, just as well. And now they are open twice a year with special exhibits. Right now, it's a Vivian Meyer exhibit and there's a very long line of people. It is absolutely amazing. If you don't know who Vivian Meyer is, look online for the documentary about her. It is amazing and heartbreaking. She was a nanny in the Chicago area. Her father, I think, was from Budapest, and her mother was French or vice versa, and they... Um, she moved over there. She had this little camera. So she would just basically walk around the streets and take all these pictures. Um, and she would do it in New York and Chicago. And they would also even go, she can't, there's a couple here that she did in Paris. And the photos are some of the most amazing photos I've ever seen. Just absolutely amazing. There was one she has of this little girl with her arms crossed. 
and her face and her arms are kind of dirty. And she looks like she's welling up with tears. And I stood there for like 10 minutes. And at one point I was welling up with tears. It's just one of the most beautiful photographs I've ever seen in my life. Her photos are just like, will rival any of the greatest photographers out there. But it's a fantastic exhibit. I think it goes to February. Yeah, I think it goes maybe just till the end of the month because the next exhibit coming up in March, my friend Kami has some paintings. She is the Comité of Jacqueline Marlev, which I still need to do a podcast about her. She was an amazing artist. But the next exhibit's about women artists and some of Kami's, uh, her family owns a vast collection and is kind of the official keepers of the flame, I guess you could call it. So I'm so excited for Kami and I can't wait to see that. So here we are. This is number six. Beautiful. And this building right here up there where those lights are on, this is where Pauline and Ernest lived. So we all know they went down south. Pauline came. Then Hadley and Ernest went to Spain for a short visit. And while they were on the train back, they decided that they were going to split up. And so when they came back, he went and stayed um, at the Murphys in his uh, atelier. And Hadley did not want to go back to their apartment on Rue Notre Dame de Champs, so she was staying in a hotel. And then later, of course, we all know the story about Pauline. Pauline came into the picture, put her hooks into him early, stole him away. And then when they, when he got divorced from Hadley, they were, when it was finally finished and, you know, everything was done and filed, they got married pretty quick within like 20 days and they ended up moving here because her rich, rich uncle Gus was able to give them a bunch of money to rent a place. And so they rented the top floor here of this building that was all the way across much larger than the Cardinal Lemois building. And one night, this is where he was when he was out drinking with Archibald Bleach and he had too much to drink. And he came home and went to the bathroom and he thought he was pulling down the cord for to flush the toilet. And he actually pulled down the cord for the skylight and it fell and gashed his forehead. And he wrapped it with 32 layers of toilet paper. It was this huge horseshoe. Look at this view coming up. It's a huge horseshoe of a gash. And they took him to the American hospital in Nui. And he decided when he was there, he got the idea to write farewell to arms. And on this street here also, you have this, the name of the street changes here pretty soon too. This, on this wall is this poem, the poem by Arthur Rimbo, uh, who was the lover of Mr. Paul Verlaine. He was young, he came to Paris, he sent this poem to Paul. Paul said, you must come to Paris. And it's uh, called The Drunken Boat. And he performed this at a salon, a men's salon down over here, just in Place Saint Sulpice. And back in 2012, they added it to this wall. It reads from this side back, and it's all in very, very old French. So for those of you that could comprehend and read French, um, this is a little, uh, this, is, this is a very good and fun exercise. Because some of it's a little different than current French. But you could see over here, we have this amazing, look at that. Saint-Sulpice. So Immovable Feast, Hemingway wrote that after he and Pauline got married, he was having some issues in the bedroom, shall we say. And so she said, go down to the church. Oh, look at that. Can you see inside that window? Can you see? I love this. Can you see that 
shadow of the statue. Oh, ugh, so great. She said, go down to the church and pray to one of the saints. He was a very devout Catholic. He was not at all. And in the Louisville Feast, he writes about this. And he says he comes down to the church. He doesn't say which chapel. He says he says a prayer. And then he goes home and everything's fixed. Everything's working again. But the truth of that story is that it actually happened in Key West. So a lot of people like to take what he writes as like scripture, but he was a writer. He sometimes changed the stories. He wasn't a biographer. He had, was writing stories. So, you know, it is true. It was a true story. He said that happened, but it didn't happen in Paris because I was on a rabbit hole going deep, 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 trying to figure out exactly which chapel and which saint it was. But it uh, wasn't here. But he did. He was, he had since he wasn't Catholic and she was. And so he had to go before they could get married. She, because she wanted to get married in a Catholic church. She said, you have to go and, you know, are, are you, are you converted to Catholicism? And he's like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that happened when I was in Italy in the hospital. And she's like, well, can you find out for sure? So of course he just kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll look into it. Well, he never did, but he convinced somebody he convinced a priest that it was true that he did at one point convert. I'll get back here. You can really see. And um, it's just amazing. And so they said, okay, but with that, it basically made his marriage to Hadley null and void. Look at that light. And so that's kind of not cool, but they got married in a Catholic church. She was still very devout, but he would walk instead. He would go over to the Luxembourg and there is the statue of the Statue of Liberty. And he would actually go in there. I'll get back even further. He would actually go in there to just kind of when he, when he said that he needed a moment to like, you know, do I give up? Do I just go back to the States? What do I do? And he'd go there actually and have a little chat with her and then kind of put his head right and then carry on in Paris. And she, at one point was closer to the Luxembourg, um, the Musée de Luxembourg. So she was closer. Now she's a little bit deeper in and it's not the same statue. The statue that he would go to is now the one that's the Musée d'Orsay. But look at that, look at that blue light. How gorgeous is that? And then you have the moon over here and this, fountain here it used to be called the fountain of the four bishops but none of them are bishops so it's the four, fountain of the four cardinals you have the mayor's office of the six uh, beautifully lit up like the french flag Hemingway said that these were the angriest lions in Paris but there's pigeons sitting out all the time so I don't really think they're frightened by it look at that this was not lit up blue. It's beautiful and golden, isn't it? Look at those shadows in there. This is Saint Sulpice, of course. I'm sure all of you guys know that one. It's a beautiful church inside. And it is the largest church in Paris after Notre Dame. So it is where they've been doing some of the larger events in the city, as well as Saint Eustache. And what did I just think? And this one, that's Saint Germain de Pre. And over here is this great little cafe. And this is a place that Hemingway would come and sit, as well as many of the expats at that time, including Fitzgerald. They'd all come sit over here. Um, I love to come sit over here, especially on a sunny day, either for a cafe in the at morning or even better for a glass of wine in the afternoon because you get this view over here. 
So let's see which way we're gonna, it's gonna be easier. So I'm gonna walk you down. Last week we walked by Rue de Lodion. So that is where, of course, Sylvia Beach. We'll go down here. Down Rue Bonaparte. And on my walk over here, the Pompiers link their calendars and Find the Pompiers <laughs> again and get a calendar. This little Lancaster store, one of my clients last week bought a purse here. It was super cute. This little red one, that little red number, super cute. Great colors. You have the Pompier station straight ahead there on the left, past the flashing light. We're gonna walk down to the big three cafes. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, yum. We'll go down this way because it's getting a little quieter. And we we'll sneak off to that one anyway. But thanks guys for joining today. And if you'd like to leave a tip to help fund this, what I am not here. Um, Kate does it. Kate does the video for me and I do all of the history and the routing and all that fun stuff. And so I pay Kate to do it. So when it's just me, I do it. But when it's Kate, I pay Kate to do it, which I'm happy to do because she's fantastic. So we would really appreciate any tips that could help support that because we might have to think if this is even doable here in the next few weeks that we could just get enough to help cover her each week while we do it. We could keep on doing it. And sadly, if not, we might have to stop doing them, which I really don't want to. So you could gladly we gladly accept anything, even just $5. You could do it to PayPal or Venmo at Claudine at ClaudineHemingway.com for both of those. And maybe if Chrissy's watching, because she's so great and handy. Chrissy, if you're on, if you're on here, would you mind? popping that little link into the chat. I thought I had it saved before we went live. And I cut and pasted it, but it did not work. But PayPal or Venmo, it's just Claudine at ClaudineHemingway.com. And we'd really, really appreciate it. Because it really helps Kate out doing these, especially with COVID. And I want to help her out too. Here is Rue Ren. Of course, over here we have the amazing Mono Pre on the other street with City Pharma. I went in there yesterday, so I had to get some stuff for a few people. Rocks, I'd have your Fairfax. And uh, 
I was walking around. Don't ever go into that place if you're already feeling any remotely insecure or bad about yourself, like at all. I went in there and I, I was asking this lady for something and uh, she said, oh no, that's, we don't have that here. And then she said, do you mind if I check your face? You look very dehydrated. I was like, uh, okay. And she pointed this thing that looked like a great big pen. Like one of those big fat Sharpies at my face. And all of a sudden I hear this little beep. And she said, oh yes, your skin is very dehydrated. It's at 14%. It doesn't get much drier. I'm like, oh, okay. Thank you so much. And then she said, asked how old I was. Yes, another humiliating moment. And then she said, oh, well, we have very good things for that. She goes, we have very great things for you that you could use for your face. And then, of course, she <laughs> took me over there. And 180 euros later, I had other things that I was getting to. But 180 years later, now my face better be as hydrated and as smooth as a baby's butt. <laughs> But it was pretty funny because I that is not the first time that has happened to me in there. That is probably about the second or third. One time they asked if I needed something to put under my, for the bags under my eyes. Uh, so now when they start walking towards me, I just kind of just say, no, no messy. Like, I don't need help. I'm good. So I just... Uh, try to walk away <laughs> but the stuff I got if it works then heck I'm all in for it but you literally have to go in there armed with your like most secure self because they're going to find something wrong with you and those girls don't work on commission they should work on commission anyway so here we have another this is a beautiful Saint-Germain-des-Prés with a great bell tower is one of the oldest things in Paris. The Abbey extended all the way up here, all the way up to Saint Sulpice, down quite a ways. And then, of course, we have Le Dumago, a Cafe de Flore. And over here, we have the Leap. So these three, they're kind of the big three cafes. They all claim Hemingway. They all claimed all of the expats at that time. But the one he really liked was leap and he would come here and he would save up some money and we'd come here and he would have the charcuterie and a mug of beer and he would have the potatoes in olive oil and soak up the olive oil with the bread but this is where he would come and all of the places that he went back then that were pretty you know not expensive are now much more expensive but the leap is really great. It's very old school. It's, uh, I definitely recommend getting reservations if you're gonna come for dinner. If you're gonna be more than just one or two people for lunch, make a reservation. I've always just walked in um, for lunch. It's really great to have amazing duck confit as well. But the first time I saw this, we were we went by here and I was like, that's a neon sign with a bear mug. Uh, that's not very fancy, <laughs> but inside it's Alsatian and so Leap was um, an Alsatian man that left that that part of France because it kept bouncing back and forth between Germany and France and he came here and he opened up this Alsatian uh, brasserie and then he ended up later selling it to one of his uh, lifelong employees that he had for a long time and now it's quite fancy um, during fashion week it's full of all of fancy from fashion week um here to and cafe de flor you have right here so these two i kind of like the floor a little bit better than dumago dumago they're both pretty touristy but you know you got to go there at least once and it's really fun to go there like i love going there on a sunday morning when you get up early and you walk around at like eight in the morning and everything is asleep 
and you go there and you sit down at like nine o'clock and you have the cafe creme and the croissant. They're not even, their croissants are super expensive. They're not even that great, but it's just all part of it. You know, sometimes you just do those things. Even if somebody turns up their nose and says it says it's touristy, you just do it once. It's fun. It's really cool. And even if the croissant's not the greatest croissant in the world, hey, you always have America for now. <laughs> but this is, of course, Boulevard Saint-Germain, Café de Flore. But he always, Hemingway always kind of had this thing that he never wanted to, he never wanted to be what everybody else was doing. And I think that uh, definitely has filtered down the generations. Because I never want, never like any of the things. As, as soon as it becomes trendy or other people do it, I don't want anything to do with it. So I think that we ha I got that <laughs> from him. But he never wanted, you know, he didn't want to live in Montparnasse because that's where everybody else lived. He didn't want to go to De Flore or Mago all the time because that's where everybody else went. So he always kind of wanted to be off doing his kind of his own thing. So he always liked to go to Leap. And so that's, I go there at least once. I do like the dot com tea, and they will push you to get meal foy at the end of the meal because it is uh, delicious, and it is their kind of the, what they're famous for as well. Uh, but then, of course, you have Saint Germain. I'll walk across the street and leave you guys over there. But I hope you guys enjoyed our little walk tonight. It ended up being a beautiful evening for it. It's not too freezing cold. It's not windy, thankfully, because it has been windy lately at night. And that was not good. But you know the thing about the mask there? They keep you warm. You just start breathing hot and heavy in it, <laughs> warming yourself up. So you got that going. But tomorrow is Monday. And I'm only here a few more days, sadly. But then I'm back in a few weeks for much longer. So let me know if there's things you guys are dying to see. And I'll add it to the list of places we should go. Oh, we might as well walk down one more block. And we will, I'll show you where they stayed. The first night they arrived on December 20th, 1921, until they moved in. The day they moved in, 100 years ago today, they moved in and swiftly left that same day to go to the Alps to go skiing because they said it was so rainy and cold in Paris. I guess maybe it should have been raining and cold tonight, right? Really fit in with the vibe of a hundred years anniversary. They left to go to the Alps and went skiing. I think of all of them, this one's my favorite, the Bonaparte. I love it. I think they have some of the greatest chairs in the entire city, the red and blue stripes, I absolutely love them. That's the Rue Guillaume Apollinaire. This is Rue Bonaparte. So if you kept going behind us, you would go right up to Saint Sulpice. You'd go right past the candy store where I need to go get grandma her marzipan. Don't tell her, I don't have it yet. I might've told her I already had it, but I don't because if I get it too early, I sometimes take a bite or two. And then after a week, they're gone. <laughs> so I have to wait. But I have other chocolate for her, of course. So just down here on the corner is Pre Au Claire. And this was the first restaurant they went to the night they arrived in August, on October. <laughs> December, one of these will be correct, December 20th, 1921. They landed in the Havre. They left New York on December 8th. Do you imagine taking that long to get here? Whew. 
I mean, West Coasters takes us a while and even Australians it takes you guys even longer. But they came here, checked in to the Hotel Jaco right around the corner, Ashley will walk by. And then they came here for dinner, the Pre Au Claire. It is still here. And they had said that they could have dinner here for pretty much next to nothing. And that's the lottery store that it looked the other night like people were trying to steal their Christmas decorations because it was just this band of guys just trying to rip them off the side of the wall. So this is a funny thing they do with the trees here. They will cut all the branches off to get rid of them. And they don't put them in water, but the trees are actually better. And I live, when not in Paris, I am around many, many tree farms. And I think the trees we get here are fresher than ones we get. So they don't necessarily need to be in water, but it is strange. But they're supposed to put a take them to these designated Dropbox spots. And people just keep dumping them on the street. So this is the Hotel Jacob dans le terre. And this is where they stayed that very first night. You can see there, and there is a little plaque in here. So we tried to go in. I did this one time and they were like, what are you doing? But they have a little thing in here. I'll just show you super quick. But it is actually more of a hostel like hotel. So we're very cheap. It's clearly more expensive now. And he said that the steps, because the steps were so old and rickety and the carpet was just ripped up in places. They said it was the perfect trap for drunks that they could never just sneak into the building. Oh, he's cute. They could never just sneak into the building because they would fall or trip or make a very loud entrance into the building. So that is, this is the Rue Jacob, another great building here. And they aren't far, of course. It's just about four blocks down to the Seine and looking right at the Louvre. So, but that is it. And I will leave you guys here to carry on with the end of your day. And I hope to see you all next week. I'm not sure where we're gonna go next week, but I will uh, figure that out and get that posted in the next day or two. And I will, if you turned in late, I'll get this uploaded. The Wi-Fi in my apartment though is incredibly slow. So it might take until tomorrow to get it posted. Um, and as I would edit out this first few minutes and it just, it's painfully slow. I can't even back up my photos on my phone. And <laughs> so, but I will uh, get that updated. And again, if you want to leave a little tip, you could do that at PayPal or my Venmo, which is Claudine at ClaudineHemingway.com for both of those two things. And I greatly appreciate anything to help to help out and fund it and help take care of Kate when she is back, I think today or tomorrow from New York. So we will see her next weekend and I will leave it there. I hope you guys all have a great day and please tune in tomorrow to part two of the story of saint jean Vieve. And if you haven't listened to part one, it's up now from last Monday. It is a fascinating story. And just wait till you hear all about 
the rules of the procession, when they did the procession of her relics, more than 150 times, they brought her little relics out and traipsed them down the Notre Dame. And there's quite a few rules. And one of them is pretty funny. But go check it out and let me know if there's somebody you want us to talk about. We started it as just doing women mostly. And now we are doing other history as well. Um, we have somebody maybe moving. We have one coming up about an amazing woman that did all she could for the rights of women. So that one's coming up, I think, the week after next. So tune in. And if there's somebody or something you want us to talk about at French history, let me know. And I'm happy to look into it. But thank you guys all so much. Thank you so much for the support and for the tips. And I really appreciate it. And oh, I guess I could say hi, right? I guess say hi on here. I don't think I did that last week. Hi, all. My hair has become very curly from this medication I'm on. And it's kind of driving me nuts. Sometimes it gets just crazy out of control. I have had the whole process with a flat iron in the morning. <laughs> and then it gets wet. It rains a lot and it gets humid and it all just starts to go and I think I look like a clown. <laughs> I don't, but that's in my head. I am, that's what I envision. A blonde Ronald McDonald. <laughs> but thank you guys all so much for joining and I hope to see you soon and make sure to check out my stories. I am posting tons of stuff. There's tons of stuff I've done when I've been here that I haven't even posted that out because I really, there's so many great things I want to share them and tell you guys the whole story. So, and I don't have as much time to do that when I'm here. So I will do all of that soon. So make sure to follow me on Instagram and also Facebook and um, my website, ClaudiaHemingway.com. Go on there and you can sign up for my newsletter to get uh, stories on there every single week as well. Thank you guys all so much. A bientôt.